Hey, traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, January 24, 2022. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. Let's get a couple of things out of the chute right away. And we're altering the sequence of what goes on in these videos a little bit today because this one is an attention grabber. First of all, you're looking at 422.50 running across the screen. Looks like it was pretty close to low of day. Did that actually happen? Was that actually a trade? Was that found inside the numbers? We'll get to that later. The short answer is yes, it was. Also, item number two on the docket. That would be the attention-grabbing docket. Today in the Lazy Swing Trader, we covered the final leg or the final portion of the position in the short QQQ trade, which was taken with options, and it was taken at around the highs. Not Friday's highs, but the highs. Item number three in the attention-grabbing docket. We went long the Qs with QLD, in the lazy swing trader around the lows. So basically what we did was cover the shorts, flip the switch, go long as the market found a low and reversed. How you doing? Now in today's video, we're going to discuss through some of the items that put that whole sequence of events together. I'd get out your sticky notepad. What's jumping off the page on the daily chart? Well, If you took the course, Lazy E-Mini Trader, you would know that we were looking at an important time zone. That's sticky note item number one. Now go back to the weekend video. What did we talk about? We talked about one of the scenarios was the margin call scenario. They flush them into Monday. They reverse them at some point during the day. They finish on the flat line. In this case, they finish near the highs. That's a reversal. On volume, 250 million shares, that's a low, folks. Doesn't have to be a low forever, but it's a low for now. So here's the way you have to put it together. I'm short with one last piece of the QQQ put trade. I'm aware that that scenario can play out. It begins to play out. It's frankly one of those things where if it walks like a duck, it talks like a duck, It's going to be a duck the majority of the time. The writing was on the wall. So not only from a swing trade perspective did we take action, and other than being short all the way down, we stayed away from getting whipped around by buying and selling on a consistent basis over the last few weeks. That was by design. Those of you that got frustrated by the lack of volume of trades and canceled the service miss the boat. You also, unfortunately, miss the point. The idea of this service is to make money consistently over time, avoid as much of losses as we can, and pile up the base hits, doubles, triples, and an occasional home run. Base hits put you in the Hall of Fame. This is swing trading, but it acts the same as day trading. Why? Because we have to treat it as a business Each type of trading has its own general rules or nuance to the rules, but it's the same general philosophy. You're not going to get rich by next week, but you'll get rich over time. That's the concept. My way is not the same as others. Others is not the same as mine. I do things my way, and we move on from there. So what happens from here? Let's talk about both sides of the tape. Can they fail? Can they go below today's low? Anything is possible Under normal garden variety conditions, they're not going to do that. We have Kabuki Theater on the deck this week. They start meeting on Tuesday. They go into Wednesday. They come out with an announcement. The market is the tail. It wags the dog. We've said this a number of times. There are no accidents, no coincidences. It's not ironic or anything like that, that the market traded down into the same time period that the Fed's going to meet. They don't do that every time, but when they do do that, you have to pay attention. Same thing goes for the flip side. You have that old buy the rumor, sell the news thing going on. Either way, let's get back to the chart. So what could happen tomorrow? What could happen over the next couple of days? Well, a number of things. A, are they going to just keep going? Well, they could, but it's unlikely. 
Again, with the Fed and the rumor mill and the financial media, which really is the fuel that makes things worse. They really have no idea what they're talking about. We know the market is a circus, but guess what? The financial media is the clown car. So what's the likely scenario? Well, there's really A and B. A is they just keep going and they shoot up with a gap higher open on Tuesday and they keep going right in through the 200 period moving average and all the way up to 445, which would be overhead resistance. Put that on a sticky note. That's probably the less likely scenario. Another likely scenario is they pull back a little bit. They do somewhat of a retracement. Large swings in both directions, so a retracement has relative meaning when the market has moved a lot of points. They can retrace 100 S&P handles, still be well above the low, and then take off again up north from there. That can happen. We discussed another thing, the 200-period moving average. When they closed below it on Friday, we said even if they go lower today, they're still going to try and rally back to that and recapture that 200-period moving average So that's what's essentially going to happen, in my opinion, and that's an opinion. I don't know it's going to happen, but it should happen under normal garden variety conditions is they should revisit and try and recapture the 200-period moving average. That's normal market behavior. Question, are they doing anything different than we discussed over the weekend video? No. We talked about that area as being supportive, but guess what? They blew through it. They went to another area, we were able to identify it ahead of time as being a magnetic spot and also buyers likely to show up. That's what you'll see later from inside the numbers. This is a real-time business. Weekly chart, 50-week moving average, spike below it, snap back to it, get below important pivots, but get back above it, all happening in one session. Some portfolio managers, some traders, some media analysts, Some media talking heads would say, hey, they tested the 50-week moving average. If they close above it on this week, they're good to go. That was a good low. It's a correction. It's a pullback. We're going to make new highs from here. You will hear that discussed as the week grows older, as long as they don't fall apart and make new lows. How about inside the numbers? So in the interest of time, what we're going to do is just highlight a few things. I'll scroll up. You can read as much or as little as you want. I'm going to highlight a couple or three things. The rest is based on how interested you are and how much you think or don't think that a daily dose of inside the numbers is right for you. Zero Dark 30, they weren't killing the tape just yet. They were kind of bouncing back and forth. So no revelations real early in the morning. What happens as the day starts to really unfold in the pre-market? And we'll circle back to stocks on the move later. But here we're talking about the normal things. What if they kill them at the open? Big swings in both directions. Here are some numbers that they actually blew through. Big fat round number. They tried to play defense there, but were unsuccessful because the ultimate destination was somewhere else. And as an example, check this number out here, 430.60. Here's a five-minute chart. Right of the vertical is today's activity. First five-minute candle of the day, the low was 430. 69. Just minutes later, look what the high is. Doesn't look like much on the chart, but 433.46, that's 30 S&P handles plus. They came up short, but the point is the numbers are still important no matter what's going on in the tape. Doesn't mean you can always trade it. Those are two different things. And right here you see, sometimes they come up short, other times they spike through. So we know that concept. Let's move on a little bit There's more that I want to show you. 837. Remember from the weekend video, the scenario was a gap down and eventually a reversal or at least a finish at the flat line, putting in a sign or signal of a trend change. No idea if that will happen. That's at 837 in the morning, but it's one of those things that begins as an awareness. Today is an on time type of day, which is another reason for the awareness On time at an important spot is what we're looking for. Still awareness and also remember from the course. They need to give us something to trade against, especially when they're stretched and the rubber band can still break. These are things that you need to understand and remember and be refreshed of in the pre-market. That's the pre-market warm-up routine. 
Reminder, big swings in both directions. We're going to let him go and conduct some shakeout operations before the storyline will emerge. Now, even before the opening bell, I'm already starting to get some just-in-casers on the page, all the way down to an important pivot where the bull bear battle would ensue at 426.36, give or take. Keep in mind, stocks on the move can likely and will spike through their numbers. That's another awareness when you're trading in these type of environments. It's an anything-goes type of start. Be careful, today is designed for the experienced trader. Cash is a position for those that don't want to or need to participate. You never need to participate. Expect me to let them go a little bit longer than usual. I'm not going to jump into anything while they're doing multiple shakeout operations. Now, the morning was wild. They tried a couple of rescue operations and failed. But here's what we're going to do. And I'm scrolling, but you can certainly pause the video. And I urge you to pause the video, read the notes, go back to the charts to double check the work. Now, you'll notice here, goal line defense set out onto the field. 426.36 does not hold. That's an if and they start closing candles below, we've got 425 and other stuff. So I'm priming the pump. They should play defense even under normal meltdown operations. Now again, read the notes, go back to the charts, double check the work. They're bouncing around. Not going to go through the detail. We want to get to the meat and potatoes. 433 is a spot. Why is that a spot? Because if they recapture it, there's another leg higher. If you read the notes, you'll see that earlier, and that remains the case. Let's keep going. I want to find the juicy stuff. 11.15. Here's a not-too-far-away, just-in-case number if they break below the lows. So here's the first one, 423.35. There's a fat round number at 425, but 423.35 would be more important from a target and magnetic standpoint. Below is 422.50, which is even more magnetic. They're both magnets and part of the just-in-case camp back after lunchtime. Now, let's see what else we have. 12.11, didn't really go to lunch. 422.50, give or take, is a spot where some buyers should be showing up to the party. High risk, but the numbers are the numbers. It's a long trade opportunity in the middle of a meltdown operation, trader's choice. Now, realize something. That's the first time that you saw me inside the numbers until 12.11 p.m. today issue anything that remotely looked like a buy opportunity. Think about that for a moment. Sometimes I'm giving you numbers because traders want to know the numbers. They have to be in a trade. They want to trade it back and forth. That's trader's choice. I'm happy to give the numbers. But if you're looking for where I'm in a trade then don't ever assume I'm in a trade unless I say it's a trade opportunity, these are the numbers, I'm going to buy here, this is where the buyers are going to show up. I'm telling you it's an opportunity. It's not going to be right all the time, and I'll tell you where it's wrong if the trade starts to go wrong or even before you get into the trade under most cases. I just want to make sure that I clear up how we're reading the notes. And then let me run through the rest of the notes. We're going to circle back to stocks on the move in a moment, but I just want to reiterate what happened. It was a rip your face off intraday reversal rally. Traders that were okay with stepping in around that area, 42250, 423, were rewarded with an all you can eat. I didn't really need to give profit targets and resistance and all that stuff. You're in the midst of a reversal. They give you all you can eat before I can even type the notes. 175 S&P handles from the low. Not the low of day, 422.50. As an example, traders that followed into the QLD trade, which is long the Qs in the swing trader product, were up about 7%. We bought it today. About stocks on the move. We had a laundry list this morning. We're going to go over the charts where the stocks hit their entry targets, Neo, Apple, Tesla, Square, which is now called something else, and Snap, NVIDIA, and Mara didn't. They're off the board. they are no trades. Neo or NIO, whichever it is, NIO, 2505 was the number. They hovered over it. They bounced away. They do the deal over here. 
This takes it off the table. I've discussed that enough times to where traders should know we're not taking this trade. They bounce almost 4% coming up short of the number. That's it. You don't want it anymore. Might work. You just don't want it. It's not the same trade. Apple, 159.60, 157.51 on the board bright and early. There was a third number on a kill them at the open type of thing, but they never got to the third number. They bounced at the first. That gave a trade. Jordan in the room got a profit on Apple on that number. They came into the second, but they hovered. So therefore, it's kind of an off-the-table scenario. I gave traders in Inside the Numbers Live, and we're talking about the live trading room now. I gave them 157 to 157.50. They could buy it anyway. That was a real-time type of decision. They went a little lower. They recovered, finish on the highs of day. Tesla, we'll run through this one quick. They bounced back and forth. They did the deal several times while doing the deal. Another successful and profitable trade in the live room and for inside the number members. Square or block, it's a hover, 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 creep into the number. We don't want it anymore scenario. That's really what happened the way I look at SQ. And another thing that you have to realize is when the market's getting killed, meaning the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, everything across the board is getting thrown out with the bathwater, everything's getting thrown out with the bathwater, the trades, the stocks will spike through numbers, takes a while for them to bounce. It's not a normal day. It's not in the 80% of the 80-20 rule. It's in the 20%. So if you're trading it, you have to take that into account. Snap didn't come into the number in the manner in which we would prefer, but you could see here the number worked anyway. The Lollapalooza on the day was really the whole thing. We're covering the short, going long from a swing trade perspective, going long inside the numbers. And by the way, Here's another added benefit of the live room. So Jordan in the live room has his own thing going with the VIX. He trades the VIX. He understands the VIX. He's in tune with the VIX. Way more than I'm in tune with the VIX. I don't try and be, but he's really in tune with it. He made a trade for the room, with the room today, with the VIX. I believe he's up about 500 bucks on his trade, and he takes small positions. That's fine. That's his choice. We're working on correctness and percentages, not how much one trader is doing over another. He also bought, I believe, the NASDAQ using, I think, a triple ETF as well, and that was within the room. So folks are making money in the room. Folks are making money inside the numbers. That's the goal, period, full stop. IWM, rescue operation underway along with everything else. What was the target for the IWM? It was 191 give or take, right? So what was the low today? How about 191.23? How you doing? The numbers work. We're in that type of position where everything's going to fall and everything's going to rally together. Not necessarily exactly at the same time, but if the S&P 500, meaning the SPY is rallying tomorrow or falling, doing a retracement, Your IWM is likely going to be doing the same. Same thing goes for the Qs. The markets are going to kind of move like a wave in the ocean together. Same thing goes for the Qs. They didn't quite get down to this 328. Not sure if I had that on the board during the weekend video or not. They're going to try and rally back to their 200 period moving average. It's not close by, but they've been down so much that it's a normal garden variety retracement. I almost skipped over the folks down at the transportation department. What did we talk about the target being here? Wasn't it right around 15,000? Maybe it was above it. There was a gap down below. What was the low today? So low was 14,876, and they closed at 15,435. How you doing? Same routine. It's going to trade like another wave in the ocean along with everything else, at least between now and the Fed meeting. After the Fed meeting, we'll see what happens, but we'll talk about it between now and then. Cues, we just went over the cues. Financials, same routine. Here's an important pivot. So we'll just discuss this for what it is. The low is 37.21. They ran a test of the pivot. They made a low of 36.82. They reversed. That kind of thing happens a lot. Now, when they get to this pivot, will they do the same thing? Well, they may, they may not. And the reason I say they may not is because they've already come somewhat close by coming below this pivot in between. But look how far away They came to run a test of this pivot at. From new highs all the way down, they're playing 
defense. You'll notice that the XLF was really in a different type of position on the chart, or the chart really looked different than the SPY. Now, I talked about the SPY being on time. That goes back to something I teach as one of the foundational items in the Lazy E-Mini Trader course where I teach you basically how the market works. Well, guess what? The XLF was also on time, but it looked nothing like the SPY when you really peel back the onion. So it was a different on time. Funny how that works. Smash Mouth, rescue operation, same routine, same thing, same story. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, that is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.